So the first thing for the first part of the workshop was you have cross-sections and you want to export the data. Well, obviously this is a 2D class. We're not concentrating on 1D stuff, but you need to know where the bank lines are stored. Bank lines are stored under the river layer um, because it's a, a line that is in the direction of flow. We decided to group them that way. Um, somebody else said, hey, where are my bank stations? Bank stations are just properties on cross sections. So if you're looking to plot a property, you can double click on a layer and under the visualization information tab, there'll be some plot options. And I forgot to mention these to you yesterday. So if you wanna see the bank stations, for instance, you can turn on the bank stations um, as a plot option. Same with if you wanna see how long your reach links are, you can turn those on and you get a whole bunch of nice text in there to, to figure stuff out. Uh, Manning's end values and so on. So we don't have time to talk about plot options right now, but this is where you, you were to find the bank stations. Now, what we did talk about during the presentation is these bank stations are typically gonna be set up for hydraulic computations. Uh, but if you're trying to set this up for uh, merging channel data, that's a different goal. And so you might not wanna follow these bank stations. If you did wanna follow the bank stations, once you're in edit mode, uh, you can right click on the bank station layer and you can create bank lines from your bank stations and that will automatically generate these lines for you um, based on the shape of the stream center line and the orientation of the cross sections. That is never going to work 100% correctly, but it'll give you a pretty good estimate. At that point, then we could go in and we can start editing things. So like here, I want this bend out farther so I can move my points out. Lots of cool editing tools you can play with. So maybe you wanna adjust these out a little bit, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea was just, just to know how to do the editing tools, stop editing, maybe we uh, save our edits, sure, why not? And then we go to find the interpolation surface. The interpolation surface is based on the cross sections. And so it's generated um, based on the shape of the cross sections, the stream center line and the bank stations. If you want to, if you make some edits and it doesn't look like it got regenerated, you can right click on the interpolation surface and say compute interpolation surface. And that will regenerate it for you. It should get regenerated every time you stop editing. So you shouldn't have to do that. Once you've done that, then you can do the geometry, right click uh, and export the layer and you can export the terrain model. Okay, so that's the first part of the workshop I wanted you guys to play with. Um, the second part was to just play with terrain modifications. So um, hopefully you guys had no trouble trying to clone a terrain model. Just right click, clone terrain. It comes up, it says, oh, uh, it, uh, notice that I already had a clone, so it'll create a new clone for me. Um, just a new layer that is uh, pointing to the, the layer that I was working off before. So the way we can check that, if we come into the layer properties, look at the source files, you can see I'm using these two terrain models. If I want more detailed information about it, I can click on the info button and that queries and it will give you the actual path name to the files. So there's my TIFF file that I'm using that that's referencing. If I open up my clone, I'll get the same looking thing. So here's that base. If I bring that up, I get the same file for that TIFF file. It's the same one. The only thing that's different is I have a different RAS file that's pointing to it. I can go in uh, add a modification. So if I want to add a line, well, let's add, light up a circle first. Why not? So I'm going to add maybe a pier right here. Okay, I can choose how big I want it to be. We'll make it really big so everybody can see it. I'm going to put it at some elevation. And then I can replace the values, what you're typically going to use, but there are other values you can do. I had a question in the breakout room. What if I wanted to lower the terrain? No problem. You just say, I want to lower the terrain. That, that'll that take the value you use and subtract it from the terrain. If you want to replace the terrain with a lower value, that works just fine too. So uh, here we're going to raise the terrain, but maybe out here I want to lower the terrain. So I'll put it at 600 feet. 
So that creates a hole in the middle of my terrain model. And then as I use the cursor, it'll tell me the elevation. So it's 930, and then the elevation changes to 600. Okay, over here, the levee is about 940. I put this elevation in to be 960, so it's completely blocking the channel. Is there a way to visualize these holes or these piers, like rotate it in 3D? Uh, this is as good as you get, but you can always draw a line and plot the terrain, and it will show you what's going on. So here I put a hole in there, and I've got a plot. Uh, now, Anton is on the line. Uh, Anton, our terrain modifications, will they show up in your 3D viewer? Yeah, they will. Okay. So if you click the 3D viewer button, which I can't do because I mine's broken right now, uh, then you could, and Anton will show you how to use the 3D viewer on uh, next week. You can go there and then you can look at it in a three-dimensional perspective. All right, the last modification we're gonna do is we'll just do a line. Uh, instead of doing a, well, we'll do the, we'll do a levee. So high ground, put my levee in along here. By default, it picked up the first and last elevation on the terrain model. Um, I can go in and I can start adding things. So if I want to add one at 1,000, this table works really slick. Maybe my elevation is 945. I'm typing it in out of order, but once I hit return, it puts it into order. So that's super convenient. If I had the ability, if I had the data sitting out in a spreadsheet, I could copy and paste it in here um, to get my profile line. Once I hit OK, then that value is reflected. Let me edit that so you can see it just a little better. We'll make that top width way too big. And let it go way out. And so there, there you can see the modification that has occurred. So the tools I think are fairly intuitive, um, but I'm, I'm hoping everyone goes home tonight, they play with it a little bit and they come back and give me a little bit of feedback tomorrow uh, about what you like or, or what you would like improved. Because I know there's, there's always lots of improvements we can, we can do with a new feature.